Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Obviously, the, the press conference today with extending the closure through the end of the school year changes things a little bit for us, um, but we are always and continue to be thoughtful about the way we roll out remote learning and at this point um, would be waiting for additional guidance from DESE, which they say will come out on Friday um, about what the next few weeks of remote learning will look like. But uh, I'm sure people have questions about graduation and prom and what does the fall look like and will there be summer school. Um, I'm happy to hear people's questions and jot them down, but unfortunately there's not a ton of answers right now. Um, right. I would anticipate in the, in the short term answers coming fast and furious towards us. So um, happy to share information as we have it. And um, we do have a school committee meeting scheduled for tonight at seven so i'd expect they that group of five has some ideas too um you know our our goal is to make this a, a, a special time for our seniors and, and thinking creatively about how we can still give them some of those experiences that we all remember from senior years of high school um at the same time adhering to all of the guidance that's out there so is one of the options to have the graduation later in the summer yeah, so, you know, historically, it's really hot in the gym at the high school, and it's really hot on the turf field. Um, so the, the later we go into June and into July, um, heat would definitely be a concern, considering that um, the turf field on any given day is about 25 degrees warmer um, than other surfaces. So just keeping that in mind, I think we, we, we have a creative bunch, and I think we have some pretty good ideas on how to how to have some sort of ceremony for kids. Just need to kind of map it out a little bit more before we release it um, out to the public. But definitely on the forefront of everybody's mind is, is creating an experience for our high school seniors. Of course, we don't have any idea really what they're gonna end up deciding for when everybody can go back to work and go back to school and stuff. It must be hard. Right, to so we, we usually run a summer program, um, the, our extended school year program for our special ed students. We're hoping that some guidance comes out on Friday on how we could still have some resemblance of a program for those students because obviously it's concerning to have a break in service for them from March 13th through really like August 25th or 26th. Um, so we're hopeful um, on that end. But on our conference call this morning, we did um, hear about a couple of different potential scenarios for what the fall could look like, whether it's staggered um, school weeks for kids. So one week, one group of kids comes, another week, another group of kids comes. Obviously that logistically is a concern, not only from a teaching perspective, but from a parent child care like perspective. So um, I'd expect significant amount of um, planning and, and thought to go into any type of rollout for the fall and something like that. What, what type of a uh, computer-based testing or distance learning stuff are you using and how, how is that working for you guys? Um, so uh, this period of time is lovingly referred to as remote learning, um, and we are using mostly Google platform for it. So for obviously for our older kids, Google Classroom, for our real younger students in pre-K, K and one, uh, we use Seesaw, which is really just a, an elementary spinoff of Google Classroom. We are not testing right now. So um, as I'm sure you all heard that both the federal government and the state government waive the MCAS. Um, so we're, we're not focused on, on computer-based testing at the moment. What we're, what we're looking at is refining skills, deepening knowledge, um, you know, delivering new content where appropriate. So obviously some of our high school courses, our APs, they're getting into some new content, but at the elementary levels, it's more about um, depth of knowledge and reinforcing skills um, for the subject, for the topics that we were teaching before school closed. Um, we, in this remote learning period, are treating things as credit, no credit. Um, so any student that's really accessing the work would receive credit. And those students that aren't accessing the work, um, a large amount of support and um, outreach has gone to those families to make sure that they're able to access, that they have the supports, that they have the technology. Um, so, you know, still, still seeking out. We have, I think, about 20 or so families in the district that we're still trying to figure out exactly what we can do for them to get them up and running. But other than that, um, I would say our first two weeks of remote learning have been quite a success. And I think um, teachers are pleased with the work, students are engaged and families are for the most part feeling supported, understanding that this is a huge shift, right? To go from um, a mom or dad trying to do your own work at home to really spending upwards of three and four hours a day trying to homeschool your students. So we are, understanding of that and what we're asking families to do is to just do the best that they can. Um, you know, 
whatever you get done or don't get done in the spring, we'll be planning for that for what it looks like in the fall and teachers will pick up the pieces. So, What kind of systems are you using for that remote education? Can you talk about um, so, so we use Google Classroom. Um, we use a lot of, so we use Google Meets um, for our in-person check-in. So teachers are having um, three real-time check-ins with students a week. That could be a Google Meet for office hours, that could be a, a, a morning meeting over the Zoom platform for our early elementary age students. Um, we're fortunate enough that we've had, we've made some significant investments in curriculum over the past couple of years. So a lot of the products that students were using in the classroom are available on this platform. So um, Pearson, we, we have, you know, um, Envision Math, we have iReady, we have a bunch of different software products that students were used to using in their classroom that was easily transferable to this remote learning environment. That's good. I mean, it's unfortunate that we have this tragedy to promote that, but um, it seems like some useful tools that might be good in the future. So I think that um, they've rolled it out fairly well. It seems like the teachers are all obviously on a learning curve and we all are. I'm curious though, now that they've sort of gotten the basics and started rolling out information, do the teachers have any kind of conversations about how to keep the kids motivated? I totally respect and understand why it has to be a pass fail situation, but at the same time, you know, it's easy for the kids to just say, well, I'm going to pass no matter what kind of work I do. Um, so I just have to get it done and get it in, not necessarily striving to do the best that they can do. I, I don't know. And I, you know, I'm struggling as a parent trying to keep the motivation so that they're really trying and learning this stuff and not just doing it and feeling like it's busy work. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. Um, and that's definitely the conversation that we are having um, when we have our faculty meetings and grade level and content meetings with teachers as well, because I think they're feeling that too. You know, what, am, what, what can we do to keep kids engaged? And unfortunately, or fortunately, um, a lot of our students are motivated by grades. And so when yes. we're talking about not assigning a, a letter grade or a numerical value to the work, some kids are just doing, you know, the bare minimum to get it done. So we have been talking um, more at the secondary level than the elementary level necessarily about um, how are we going to treat term four when it comes to GPAs and what weight will they have understanding that credit or no credit is you know pretty polarizing um, concept but you know can we come up with a system where students that are exceeding the expectations you know we're adding three points to their GPA and students that are not take three points to the to the annual average add three points take three points off all those types of conversations are, are happening now because we do realize that now that we're in week three um we need to give some definitive answers to people on what this will look like as far as grading and transcripts for our underclassroom classmen that are thinking about applying to colleges and how that'll affect their overall gpa exactly that's good to hear thank you well to the new viewers out there do you have any questions for the superintendent Um, is there any idea of when seniors last day would be? Um, so my recommendation um, to the school committee will be that it remains however it was on the calendar, which I think is either May 22nd or May 29th. I don't have the calendar right in front of me. Um, given the fact that we're, you know, the reason why we were kind of up in the air is the, the idea of going back to school. Um, when Commissioner Riley first talked about the closure and what reopening would look like, he emphasized really taking advantage of any in-person learning time that we could in those later weeks of, of May and into early June. And since the closure obviously now extends through the school year, um, and we won't be having any of those face-to-face -face instructional moments with students, I would recommend to the school committee that we stay with the original calendar. Okay, great. Thank you. Do, do students have final exams still with the system? Um, we have not um, had conversations yet about final exams. Remember, we just found out at noon also that school's not going back um, this year. So it would be difficult to, to deliver exams on this platform. Um, but I think there are some subjects or content areas where it's important to have some kind of assessment at the end. So we still need to work out all of those pieces with the teachers. We want to do what makes the most sense for students. Um, but we do want to make sure that students are accurately placed for their next year courses as well. Um, so obviously a ton of conversation needs to happen before 
we would be deciding whether there's any exams or not. And then probably for the seniors, they're worried because, you know, they're going to colleges, but everyone in the country is in the same situation. So the colleges ought to have some kind of a system developed for submitting new students. Right. The one thing that I um, know for certain after my 10 years here in Pembroke is that our students are very motivated and very conscious about their GPAs and how they stack up, up, up against students across not just the Commonwealth, um, but the country. So I know that everyone's in the same boat, but we, we still have a lot of students that have some anxiety around what this is going to look like on a college transcript. We just want to make sure that, that we're you know, taking all of that into account um, as we start to plan for what the rest of this year will look like. Do we have any students out there? I can't tell because the video is not on, but I'm just kind of wondering what it's like from their perspective. Maybe Peggy, do you know? Because you have a student in, the, in this high school. I do. I have a freshman in the high school. Um, I, I'm finding that she's getting a lot of work in the beginning of the week and being told that it needs to be done by Friday afternoon or Thursday afternoon. And she is in the process of, I think, trying to learn how to time manage for herself, which is a good lesson for the kids to learn, sure. Um, there's been a lot of 3 a.m.s trying to get that English paper done. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just like a regular school week. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it hadn't been for her in the past, but no. without the structure, I think, it's... Um, adding a whole new challenge to her, you know, maybe putting another tool into her toolbox. I don't know. I also have a senior, but he is at a private school and they haven't missed a beat. They went, you know, the minute that school got canceled, they went right on to Zoom and had classes. Granted, they were shortened, but they've been full, way, you know, full classes. They're not behind on their AP at all. They're going to finish school. Actually, the seniors at BC High, their last day of school was this past Thursday. Unless you have AP classes, then you continue. But they were lucky enough, I think, because they're a private school and they all were already, they already have the um, tools that they need to continue online. So they didn't miss a beat. So it's, you know, when you compare the two, though, I find that my freshman is definitely struggling a little bit more than my senior. Uh, so is it a factor of just uh, the amount of money that the schools have to be able to get those kind of programs up and running? I think they all are required to have an iPad. So that's probably right. the biggest difference. They already have iPads in hand. So they, they're very used to work through the iPad. So our, just to, to clarify, in, in a public school setting, um, we have to ensure that all students have equitable access. Right. So we're talking about special ed students, English language learners. So it's a little bit easier for a charter school or a private school to, to hop on full remote learning. Um, and that's why the, the public sector has been a little bit slower on that. Is, you know, we do have yeah. to, it that has to be equitable access. No judgment going on here, just interesting. No, I know, I know, I know. I just wanted to get that out there for people because we have heard that too in other circles of school systems that have gotten right up and going. And so we need to make sure that we're supporting all of our students um, before we can roll anything out that's required. So when the enrichment phase, when we're in the enrichment phase, um, it was, you know, whatever you did was a bonus. Now that it, there's some requirement to piece to it, we do need to make sure that everybody has equitable access. It's just interesting the difference in the emotional, the way that they're handling it, having the structure continue versus the non structure. But I don't know, you know, there's not much else you could do differently. The next town meeting, we'll have to vote to get all the students' iPads. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not going to happen, but Sophia, did you have something to say? No. How do they keep handling everything emotionally? Um, you know, we shared a lot about the academics, but I mean, this is a huge gap in their personal experience. So, how, how are they adjusting to that? So, our our main focus this whole time has been about social, emotional, um, and mental health. So preserving the connection with their teachers and with their classmates. I think it's tough. I think, you know, kids are struggling. Um, you know, have, being a mom of a, a fifth grader and a second grader, there has been a handful of times where they told me that they don't want to be on their device, which I never thought I would hear, <laughs> um, given, given that they're 10 and uh, 8 and 12. Um, but at the same time, I do think it's important that 
parents remember to focus on the mental health. It, this shouldn't be hard, right? So if it's too much, you just put it down for the day. Um, I was lucky enough to participate in a, a forum last week or the week before where um, one of our school social workers joined us as well. And she was just talking about, you know, just taking a breath. Maybe that breath means you walk out to the mailbox and you walk back, but you know, you, you've got to be mindful of the fact that this is a lot. It's a lot for kids to handle and it's a lot for adults to handle. Um, and that, you know, when we're thinking about what our day looks like, that we're prioritizing our own health and well-being. So. It's first time for everyone on this one. It's definitely yeah, easy. it almost seems like that was easier to do in the beginning. And now that we're looking at more long term, I feel like we need to have, I don't know, some kind of way to, to look at this beyond just the get through the day process. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and for any students that's struggling with a specific assignment or, um, you know, obviously our, our lower elementary students really rely on their caregiver to help, but our, our high school students should feel free to reach out to any of their teachers, their guidance counselors, all of the support personnel in the buildings. Everybody is, is around because we can't go anywhere. Um, so answering emails, um, you know, I know our teachers are out there and, and, you know, worried about their students as well. So anybody, any of our students that needs a little extra should just reach out and our, our, our staff is, is ready, willing, and able, so. Are, are you guys making contingency plans that this actually might go on, God forbid, but like for another year, um, you know, especially if with you know, the lack of a vaccine, et cetera, is, 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 right. is that being examined at all? Like, right. So I think, you know, everyone's been pretty clear all along that we could be facing a, another spike in, in the late fall, early winter. So obviously everything that we're doing now, we're taking note of what's working and what's not working. Um, so that if and when we find ourselves here again, we're able to seamlessly transition to remote learning instead of that kind of break, that two-week break that, that most kids experience. Um, so, yeah, obviously we're planning. We A lot of work will happen over the summer to figure out what September should look like for students because we will have students coming to us at various grade levels in various places. Um, so making sure that um, generally the beginning of the school year looks a lot like review for students. It's possible that going into next year, that review will be more like teaching material that they didn't get at the end of this current year. So I'm um, definitely planning on that end as well as taking note of what's working and not working. Um, the state has started kind of a best practice website so you can look around and see where it's working in other places, understanding that the potential to need to do this again is, is pretty much a given, so. I want to ask you about that, how much you interact with the other school systems to see uh, what's working. Well, Art, I live in a bubble and I don't talk to anyone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a weekly call um, uh, with the commissioner across the state. So that's, there's generally anywhere from 550 to 1,000 people on that call. Um, but our school districts are kind of broken up into regions. So Pembroke falls into the Lighthouse region. So the Lighthouse group of su superintendents talks anywhere from two to three times a week, just about, so on a Zoom call similar to this, just about what people are doing. And then the, the array of emails that goes across about anything and everything from custodians to food services, to credit, no credit, to spring sports. I would say daily, there's hundreds of emails that go back and forth. Between us. So I think, wow. you know, the consensus is that we all want to do the same thing because it's really hard when Hanover does one thing, Pembroke does something else, and Marshfield's doing a third thing. So so some consistency, I think, has, has been really important to us as leaders. So we've been really working together and deciding things as a group. Well, that sounds good. Is there um, anything you want to say to the people before we go, Erin? Um, just to thank everybody, all the moms and dads and caregivers out there. This isn't easy. We get it. Be patient. Take a breath. Um, you know, hopefully we'll have some definitive answers for people over the next week or so. Um, so hang in there. We're thinking about you. And again, our staff is here, our mental health professionals, our guidance counselors, our social workers, all of our teachers, our building administrators. If you all need anything and there's anything we can help with, please reach out to us. Hey, Erin, can I ask you a quick question? Sure, Allison. How are you? I'm wonderful. Um, How are you? <laughs> I'm good. My daughter actually was just wondering, like, what about their lockers? I, and I know it's like, not very <laughs> right. important. No, no, ever, no, they're all important questions. So I would anticipate as um, Massachusetts finds itself coming out of the surge, we have, the, you know, I think they're referencing two weeks of a decline in cases. That's though there's no school, that the, the school buildings will not remain closed. So I think we'll be able to, as we get into later May, beginning of June, um, 
carve out a way for kids to come in and get some of their items from their walkers and kind of close out for the year. Um, so I think that's just a matter of, of getting through the spike that we're in now. Um, and as the governor starts to release some of the restrictions, you know, and I think it's phase three or so, um, we would be able to open the buildings and have students come in and retrieve their stuff. Great, makes sense. Thank you. Erin, is there anything we can do as parents for the teachers? I know that they're probably struggling as much as we are. I mean, is there any way we can support them or do, I don't know. I mean, we could probably come up with a way to show appreciation, but is there anything specific that they're asking for that would be helpful for them? Um, at this point, I think they're just asking for your patience. Um, you know, it is as much of a learning curve for them as it is for you. We have varying levels of comfort with technology um, across the district. So just being patient with them as they figure out what works best for them, understanding that a lot of our teachers have small kids at home too. Um, so yep. figuring out how to do, how to work like the rest of us in their homes is difficult. And just, just being patient with them. Um, if, if they have any specific requests, I will let you all know. I, some of the PTOs have reached out to looking to see how they, what they can do to support teachers. Um, at this point, it's just, uh, you know, just being patient with us. You know, we're kind of getting into a groove now. So hopefully things will get a little bit easier in the coming weeks. But, um, you know, this is new for all of us. Sounds good. You talked about the, the um, graduation a little bit, but did you talk, talk about the prom and what they might... Have to do with um, so the prom was, was scheduled for May 19th was my guess. Again, I don't have a calendar in front of me. Obviously, that is not um, possible at this point. Um, the prom was scheduled to be at the Pembroke Country Club. They have reached out to us with some alternate dates. So depending on, you know, what the lifting of restrictions look like, we will obviously explore any potential opportunity to have some sort of prom for students. Um, but again, we, we can't really definitively decide that until we know what you know, the next couple of weeks brings for just the state as a whole. And uh, people that have textbooks at home, will they probably, they'll bring it back once you get the building back open? Yeah, again, similar to the, the conversation around the lockers, we'll figure out a way for kids to kind of close out the school year. I would, as I said before, anticipate that some of the restrictions um, will allow, will be lifted and allow us to open the buildings. Obviously, 900 kids should not be proceeding to the high school at the same time, um, but staggering some kind of, you know, student ability to enter into the building. It's kind of uh, it's kind of good that this is happening now because we have the technology to deal with this. So everyone's not just left out on their own, um, trying to figure out what to do. Um, does anyone else have any other questions or anything that we should talk about? Um, gra Haley, gra graduation. Um, we just talked about that, but um, it's still undetermined. Is that right? Right, so I would anticipate having you know some definitive dates out to families um, sometime next week around some of those pieces because we do need a little bit of time to plan on our end and figure out what makes the most sense. Oh, well, what happened there? Um, okay, so that answers that question. That's all right to you join late, Haley. No problem. Um, okay, well, I guess this will conclude our meeting. Uh, we'll try this again, and uh, thanks for joining us. Good work. Bye, guys. Thanks. Good Thank luck. You.